How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Sonic Adventure DX. In today's special bonus episode, I'm going to basically show off what I did off-screen while I was, uh, well, actually, I did this off-screen over the course of just a few days, but I actually went ahead and grabbed pretty much all of the emblems except for the ones in the adventure field. Um, and I basically just did that because I made, wanted to keep the adventure field one so I could show you on screen what you had to do to get the super special secret unlock once you got all the emblems. But what you would do in order to get the emblems that I got there, there's three emblems per action stage. In order to get those, you go into trial mode and you can pick your character out. Basically what this video is going to be is it's just going to be me basically speedrunning the levels or doing whatever is necessary for each condition for the levels and giving you strategies on exactly how to do them with each character. So, If you're not really interested in that part and not really interested in getting all the emblems then you don't really need to watch this one but uh, just letting you know that's how it's going to go from here. So. Let's start off with Sonic the Hedgehog himself and I think Sonic's stages honestly are the most difficult stages to rank to get the Mission B's and Mission A's all finished with. Well, not really the Mission B's because the Mission B's aren't really hard in any one stage except for possibly one of them, but it's it, they're not too difficult. Um, in Sonic stages, the Mission B's require that you get 50 rings, hold at least 50 rings, hold on to them till the end of the stage and complete the stage while holding on to at least 50 rings. So that's, like I said, not a big deal at all. Um, but his A rank missions require you to do the stage in a set amount of time, which is why I am flying through the stage like nobody's business right now. Because Lost Worlds in particular requires that you do the level in 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Now, if you recall from the playthrough that I did of it, first off, I didn't take that little shortcut there. Um, and second off, I'm pretty sure when I left this room, I had like 45, I would have had like 45 seconds left on the timer there in order to get to the end of the level. And this is like the half, this room is like the halfway point of the level so it's you gotta really motor for this one so knowing when to use the boost jump which is the spin dash and then jumping directly after charging it up a little bit is key to Sonic stages in order to speed run them and get the A rank missions all completed because if you didn't know that you could boost jump there well then you would have had to waste valuable time riding on the snake and then you could have had you know less time to finish the stage basically what you want to do for this one is you want to make sure that you use the boost jump effectively towards the beginning of the stage and hurry as much as you can in the beginning so that way if you make mistakes towards the end like I did in the transition between that first part and this part of the stage I died a couple of times for no apparent reason um, that way if you make mistakes it's easier you have a little bit more of a safety net now I wanted to show this part off because there's actually a little trick you can do in that room to make it much easier to get in the 4 minute 30 second time limit. If that's at the right side of the room after the door and the spin dash, um, light speed dash ring trail that you need to get out of the room is directly above you there. So if you spin dash jump off of the, the wall panels there and I just jumped over the capsule like a complete dumbass. But if you uh, spin dash jump off of the wall panels on the side there, you can actually get up to that little window and Sweet. skip a huge amount of the stage. So it's a pretty decent shortcut for so like some. So. But yeah, that's probably the most difficult one. Or for most people, they might say that there's other ones that are more difficult. But that one, I think, gets the most difficult ones out of the way. So. Now we'll move on to Tails, and of course, because it's Tails, I have to do my favorite stage in the whole game for his little trial mission. I have to finish Speed Highway. Tails' missions require that you get... I believe it also requires you get 50 rings for his B-rank missions. Yeah, that would be it. And then for his A-rank missions, it says that you have to beat an even faster version of whatever AI you're racing, either Sonic or Dr. Eggman. But I don't find that they're any faster, honestly, because as you can see, this... Uh, gameplay footage here looks pretty similar to the footage that I showed you for the actual playthrough, minus a few little, you know, gameplay differences because obviously not no two playthroughs of this stage are going to be exactly the same because I'm going to screw up here and there or I'm going to correct something that I think I screwed up in the actual playthrough, so... But yeah, it doesn't seem like the, they're any faster, honestly. It just seems like they pinball a little bit more but back and forth between the areas, so they kind of like I guess you could say they make them faster. Also, this is where the rocket takes you, by the way. It's actually slower than the other direction that you could have gone, but I, I wanted to go up here to show it off. But yeah, um, they don't necessarily move faster. The AI just kind of pinballs back and forth a little bit quicker, 
um, which makes it so that you essentially can't make as many mistakes when you're playing the stage. So I guess you could say it's like they're faster, but honestly they're not. Um, Sonic will pinball a lot though in his stages, so honestly I'm showing you the, probably the easiest tail stage to finish the mission A for. Also if you go up to the top of that building you can skip over all the platforms there, so that might be something that you'd want to do. Uh, just in case you want to skip over that stuff, but really I don't find Tails' A rank missions to be all that difficult. So, Also, um, some of the characters say different so things when you uh, finish the stage okay, with them. With a certain amount of time left, um, or with a certain score. If your score is pretty high, they'll usually so say something different. So. Now we'll move on to Knuckles' stages, which are a little bit different, because he can't really... You know, there are sometimes, you know, it's difficult. it would be difficult to collect 50 rings and then do that. So they have you, for the B-Rank missions, they have you find the emeralds without hints, using any of the to call hint balls. Or, and for the A-Rank missions, you have to uh, find them within a certain specific time limit. Now for Skydeck, that time limit is two minutes. For, for every other Knuckles stage, I believe the time limit is exactly one minute. So you got to kind of motor for some of these. Now, it may seem like I'm really, really going quick and I'm kind of using, like, ESP to find the emeralds in here, but I actually used a little trick. I don't know if it would be considered cheating or not, but I uh, actually used a little trick. Basically, every time you get an emerald, you get a checkpoint in the stage, and if you try to restart the stage, it will checkpoint you where you found that last emerald. So what I did is I actually went out and found the location of each emerald piece, but I didn't actually collect it. So that way I knew where they were, I could restart the stage, and I could just go ahead and grab them as quickly as possible and I actually managed to get in in less than a minute for Skydeck there so that one um, that's a little trick that I guess you could use for Knuckles if you find it difficult to get in in less than a minute for some of the stages which I can see why because it definitely took me a few tries for some of them to get in in less than a minute so there you go that would be how you do it so now moving on to Amy, she needs to collect 50 rings and grab the balloon in her B-Rank missions, basically like Sonic and Tails' uh, B-Rank missions, and her A-Rank missions, like Sonic's, require that you get in to the balloon within a certain amount of time. Now for Twinkle Park, it's like two minutes, so that one actually I found this one to be remotely difficult because obviously Amy moves like molasses, as we've established from the playthrough. But uh, the rest of them, honestly, I think Amy's uh, A-Rank missions are a little easier than Sonic's because she usually has plenty of time to get through the stages, which is kind of weird because you'd think, oh, you know, Hot Shelter, Hot Shelter's requirement is, I believe, 5 minutes and 30 seconds, and at first glance, that seems like not a lot of time, but really, if you're motoring through the whole stage, like, and, you know, you don't really stop for anything in particular, it really won't take you 5 minutes, 30 seconds to beat that level, so... I think I got in in like 5 minutes or something like that, so... It really won't take you 5 minutes, 30 seconds. Now the trick with Amy is that her aerial momentum is a lot better than her forward momentum with when she's just running on the ground. So, using her jumps to your advantage, especially her hammer jump that she gets when she's at maximum running speed on the ground, will really help to cut down on times for um, when you're doing that. But I mean, as you can see, you can see how fast she's running, and then when she jumps, you can see the difference in her speed. She actually covers a lot more ground when she's jumping than she does when she's on the ground. So, it's in your best interest to use her aerial uh, movement uh, to not only gain speed on the ground so you can do the hammer jump, but also to boost your speed when you do something stupid and screw up like I just did there. So basically with Amy, it's all about getting in the air as quickly as possible and building momentum that way. And if you can manage to do that, you should get in in a decently low amount of time. As, as I said, Twinkle Park is probably the most difficult one with her, but I managed to get in with an even 9 seconds left, so that's not bad. I still didn't manage to get her to say her other thingamajigger, so I still don't know what she says, but it's there, so that's how you do Amy's B and A rank missions. Now here's the one that everyone hates, the granddaddy of them all, and probably one of the major reasons why people dislike Big in this game, because if they've played the game through 100%, they'll know what you have to do for this one. Big's B rank missions require you to catch a 1000 gram fish, and then Froggy. And his A-Rank missions require you to catch a 2,000 gram fish, and then Froggy. Now it's kind of hard to tell sometimes whether the fish are 1,000 or 2,000 grams, 
What you can do is kind of measure them against Big Stomach. If they are about as wide as the white spot on Big Stomach, or longer than Big's body, like this shark in the water here, uh, they are going to be either incredibly close to 2,000 pounds, which believe me can get really annoying really fast, or they're going to be over 2,000, or 2,000 pounds, 2,000 grams, excuse me, thinking a different system. So what you want to do basically is, in order to get these, usually a 1,000 gram fish aren't very hard to come by, but 2,000 gram fish are quite formidable as you can see here. Once you hook a 2,000 gram fish, and sometimes even a 1,000 gram fish you want to do this, do not hit any of the buttons to reel him in yet, because that fish is moving, and he will literally swim away until he hits a wall or some other obstacle. So you don't want to do that. Now as you can see I'm having very little luck with this guy right now because whenever I try to reel him in, he'll start to swim away. Now the game actually came up with a relatively um, ingenious way of figuring out how you can reel these fish in because in the game there's actually a pseudo random number generator, I say pseudo for reasons I'll explain in a minute, that determines the percentage of a chance for the fish to actually kick away and do that little swimming sound that makes him swim away from you and make the line go for longer so to make it the distance between you and the fish longer so I say pseudo because every fish has an invisible meter called a fatigue meter this is just from my, what I understand of the game mechanics I don't think it's in any FAQ or anything like that so basically each fish has a fatigue meter and the fatigue meter is kinda of like the stamina bar in the chow garden if you've done that before we'll get to that soon enough but um for each amount of challenge that you offer to the fish by wiggling the control stick so that you can see the line kind of moving on the screen there and the fish is moving to the right every now and again just like sliding to the right so it's, it's kind of a weird animation but what I'm doing basically is I'm moving him to the right I'm reeling him in a little bit then when the bar starts to get high I'll mash the right button so that the fish moves to the right while I'm waiting for the bar to come back down that's called offering challenge to the fish and eventually the fatigue meter will go down and the chances of him trying to swim away will get lower and lower. They'll never get to 0% obviously because the fish can't get exhausted like that or else he'd be dead and there'd be no point in us reeling him in. But the more you lower the chances the better off you'll be in catching the fish and believe me they can swim away once you've got them at a low distance like I've got them here. I've had fish in less than 5 meters and they've swam back out to 25 so but uh, that one actually was probably one of the fastest catches I can get usually you'll end up taking about three or four minutes to catch one of those fish I'm pretty sure that one I did in less than two minutes but with enough patience and time it, you should be able to catch it in a little less than four minutes if you use my method of actually challenging the fish and then once you've gotten him fatigued enough reeling him in little by little so now obviously we're not done yet, we actually have to catch Froggy as well in order for this mission to be successful. And I find it kind of funny because in a way Froggy offered challenge in this one, which he really doesn't offer in most of them. And if you pay attention to the bar, I actually almost died twice trying to reel Froggy in after just catching that 2000 gram fish, 2300 gram fish. Which I find pretty funny because before I show you this gameplay footage, I actually recorded a little bit of footage before that. I caught like a 2,500 gram fish or something like that. So it was, it took like four minutes to catch that guy. So I was like, oh, that's not too bad. And then I went to catch Froggy and not I killed myself. So <laughs> you got to be careful because once you've caught that fish, you're not quite done yet. And you got to make sure that you actually get the fish and get Froggy before you manage to get through that. So. Hopefully my challenge method will help you out a little bit if you're planning on doing these action stage trials yourself. I know I found it incredibly aggravating before I figured out how to challenge the fish. I remember, I think when I did Twinkle Park's 2000 gram fish one, it took me like 15 minutes to reel the sucker in. It was, it was stupid. So hopefully this method will help you out a little bit. Now we'll move on to Gamma stages, and uh, Gamma stages are a little bit different. Uh, let's see, what does he need for... He needs 50 rings for his B rank missions, and for his A rank missions, he actually needs to get them get into the uh, stage and get to his goal within a certain amount of time. Now the difference between Gamma's and everyone else's A rank missions is the fact that Gamma's time is running down, not running up. So... Getting to the end of the stage will require that you have more than a certain amount of seconds left on the clock. 
For Emerald Coast, you actually have to have more than three minutes left on the clock, which is a little bit tough, honestly, so that's why I decided to do this one in particular, because you really gotta move with Gamma on some of these stages in order to get there, except for Windy Valley, because Windy Valley, it's like nothing. You can pretty much just shoot just shoot the Caterpillars, and you'll get like ten hit combos, and you end up with like five and a half minutes left, so. Now, the only thing is that once you pick up the goal, or get to the goal of Gamma stages, the time stops rounding up. So make sure that your timer gets above whatever it needs to be before you pick up the goal or shoot the goal or do whatever you need to do for the goal. But uh, with a little bit of practice, gamma stages really aren't that difficult either. So honestly, I don't think the trial modes in this one for the action stages are all that bad. The second game makes it a little more difficult, but uh, in any case, we also have sub games that we can do, which are basically all the mini games that you've done over the course of the entire game through the story. And there's, you know, there's Sky Chase, there's all that stuff. Um, Ice Cap and the boss rushes will never have emblems. But you can also go to places that characters normally couldn't get to, like Sand Hill with Sonic. Now, there's two emblems in each sub-game stage that have emblems. And usually it's just beat out the score that's the A-rank mission, and you'll get the emblem for it. Um, I would recommend doing that with a character that already played the stage, um at some point, because if they already played the stage, they've got the first emblem, and then they just need to beat the A rank. Um, whatever the first score is on the top of the scoreboard that you see when you go to select the sub game. So then once they beat that, they'll have both the emblems, and then you don't have to get them with anybody else. You can get them with whichever characters you want to ca get them with. So Now for Sand Hill, the A rank, or the first rank, is actually a little bit difficult, because in order to get there, you have to get in in, I believe it's less than a minute you have to get to the goal in order to get the 5,000 point time bonus. Now, the gates, basically, what you get is each time you pass through a gate, you get 10 points times the multiplier in the top right corner there. In order to get over 5,000 points, I believe you have to pass through 30 hey, gates. Don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure, but it definitely worked for me when I did it this time. So, you have to pass through 30 consecutive so gates from what I understand, at least in order to get in in a relatively decent with a relatively decent score and still get uh, you know what you're looking for there i figured i'd also show off twinkle circuit even though we've already done it in the game because every character can actually go to twinkle circuit i think the only uh mini game that i missed was a uh, hedgehog hammer which you can do with amy and um you know, if you've gotten the long hammer at this point, it's really not going to be too difficult to beat out your score. Just look for a bunch of supersonics and, uh, you know, wail on them, so. But I figured I'd show off Twinkle Circuit because there are different characters that can, you know, go to them. All the characters can go to them, and they all have different driving stats, which will be carried over into the second game in a different minigame. One thing you want to watch out for, though, even though Knuckles is the best driver, those rails are not 100% guaranteed to keep you from falling off the edge. Yeah, Twinkle Park should probably get a waiver for that or something, because that looks a little bit too dangerous for the townsfolk. I mean, Knuckles can survive. He has lives, you know, but the townsfolk don't exactly have lives. They have one life, and that's it. So, you know. Either way, I've found through a little bit of experimentation that Knuckles is actually the best driver in the game. As you can see from here, once he gets up to speed, his handling is really good, so he can actually get around corners really easily. Um... Even, you know, and his drifting is really good too, like if you let go of the A button and just use the, um, after accelerating, you let go of the A button and just use the control stick to turn. His drifting is really good, his handling is really good, he, his acceleration isn't the best. I think Tails has a little bit better acceleration than he does. But at the same time, Knuckles is real, just really, really good at driving, um, the Twinkle Circuit carts. So, he's probably the one I would say to use to get the, uh, best times if you're looking to get the best time that you could possibly get. Yes, I purposely left 69 rings on my thing for the hilarity. I'm pretty sure it's not that funny, but I left them there on purpose. Anyway, um, in order to get the uh, two emblems for this one, you have to beat the 10 minute um, best time for the first emblem. Uh, actually, no. I think for the regular emblem for it, you just need to actually play the stage. Usually that's what it is for the sub-games, is you just have to play the stage for the regular emblem, and then for the uh, second emblem in the sub-game, you have to actually beat whatever the time is or the score is in the first section of the sub-game. So, that's what you want to look out for. I think it got a pretty decent time for a Twinkle Circuit here with Knuckles. It's under two minutes, so that's not too bad. 
little better than most of the other characters that have done anyway. But yeah, that's about all for the uh, trial stages in general, and the sub-games and the action stages, so uh, I think I've kind of explained pretty much how to do all of them fairly well anyway. So hopefully that helped you guys out if you were looking for some strategies on how to do those. And uh, I think that's going to be all for this episode of Sonic Adventure DX. Next time, we'll look at the Chow Garden and see what the ins and outs of that are. And then after that, we'll probably be getting to, you know, different uh, other little odds and ends of the game. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Take care.